I'm going to bring a short tutorial for you today about um, doing a tape pattern and using tape to pattern objects. Uh, this is a tail that I've made out of foam and I've already taped it. Uh, in this case, I've used masking tape. This is just basic masking tape and uh, I've put it on a, a tape dispenser just to make it easier. And uh, I'm not going to show you how to tape because hopefully taping is apparent, but uh, you just stick it to the foam and press it down and you just do it all over your piece and then you'll be able to uh, use this as an impression to know what kind of pattern to make. Uh, I've also carefully marked my pattern pieces. Um, that way I know where they line up. I've used some hash marks to line them up and I've drawn the direction of my fur that I want my fur to go. So I'm going to take a razor blade. I'm going to just take it out just a tiny bit and I'm going to cut off this tape and I'm actually going to be sticking it to some gift wrap. And uh, uh, that's so it just isn't sticky and I can save my pattern and, and use it over and over if I want to. So this is the process. I'm just going to uh, cut my tape off. So, I've got my tail all um, untaped, uh, I have all my tape pattern pieces stuck down, you don't want any of them to overlap. I've um, got several pieces of paper here with my tape pattern on them. And I'm going to take this last piece, the little base, off of there too. For this next step, I'm actually going to cut out my pattern pieces, and uh, that's a fairly easy process. I don't leave any seam allowance because I draw that on uh, my fabric, so I want to cut as close to the tape as possible without actually cutting the tape. And you'll want to just discard any excess paper. I have all of my pattern pieces. Uh, these are all, all still clearly marked with the direction of the fur. Um, I also marked in yellow where which pieces they connect to, just like a puzzle piece. And uh, I 
we've got 19 pieces here. Um, most of them will be cut out in brown fur. Uh, some of them will be cut out in white fur, and I'll show you that in the next step. So here I am with my uh, tip pattern pieces. These are going to be my tail tip on my tail, and I've determined which direction my fur goes. It's going to be going down to make a mark uh, if I want to uh, uh, mirror that. Also, additionally, I want to take any of the little hash marks that I've added and mirror them on the other side. There we go. If there's any other important marks that you need mirrored on the other side, this is the side that we're going to be tracing. If you don't trace the sticky side up, or the paper side basically, you're going to get a mirrored pattern. And because my tail is uh, directional and curves in a specific way, I don't want to mirror my pattern or else my tail isn't going to fit in that pattern that I'm going to sew. Uh, so this always faces down, uh, tape down. So. And then uh, just align your pieces in a way where you use the least amount of fake fur. Uh, because that's pretty much the whole point of using a pattern, is so you know how much fur you're going to be using. And I'm going to be using a fairly narrow seam allowance, but I'm going to be tracing out from my pattern pieces by just a little bit. Now I'm going to use my hash marks that I traced onto the back side and then I'm going to label my piece. So tip one. I'm going to do that with the rest of my pieces here. And I'm just tracing these on with a charcoal pencil. Uh, it'll rub off or wash out uh, once my piece is finished. So you don't ever want to use a permanent marker because uh, it can bleed, especially if it gets in contact with any alcohol. My hash marks. And tip two. So I've got my pattern pieces cut out for my tail tip. I'm going to use my razor blade and cut them out. Um, I prefer to use a razor blade to cut out my pattern pieces uh, because it doesn't cut or chop the pile of the fur. Um, and also uh, scissors, a very small pair of scissors can be used or a very sharp pair of scissors can be used to just cut the backing of the fur. I still think a sharp razor blade is much easier though. If you're worried about it cutting your work area, uh, you can also get a cutting mat in the quilting department of fabric stores. They have self-healing cutting mats. I have a small cutting mat. This is what they look like. Um, I don't stick the razor blade out very far, so I'm not really that concerned with my particular work area, but if you're using somebody else's items, uh, or somebody else's desk, for example, you don't want to leave little razor blade marks. So, here's one of my pattern pieces, and uh, you can see how well it matches up with my piece. And when I taped it, that tape was up, and so that's where my fur is going to come from. So 
Here's my next piece. And again, the tape is up. Got another piece taken care of. And my final piece for the tail tip. And I'm just going to sew the tail tip really quick just to demonstrate what it is like. So here I am with my pattern pieces. I'm going to sew just the tip together just to demonstrate how it goes together. And I'm going to use my pattern pieces that I've wrote my notes on to uh, reference how to assemble them. So this one connects to this piece, and this one connects to this piece, and it's just like a little puzzle, so. So I'm going to connect these ones together, and I'm going to sew right along that edge here. You can pin this if you choose, or you can uh, sew it. Just be sure that uh, it lines up. And I just use a straight stitch to assemble these pieces. Something like a tail isn't going to need a big heavy zigzag or a surged edge or anything like that. So. first ones. So this one's going to get sewn along this long edge here. As I sew these, I brush my finger in between. This helps keep the fur out of the sewing machine. So, there's my progress so far. And I'm going to sew this third piece, which is going to fit right into place here. So there is my pattern piece assembled. This is just for the tail tip. I'm going to turn it right sides out. As usual, I'm going to be combing those seams to make sure to get any of the fur out, especially here at the tail tip where it's all tucked inside. If you find that the fur is tucked in too much, you can sew it a second time and then close that up only after you've brushed out your fur from your seams. Sometimes it helps to have a wire brush on hand to get some of the fur out of the seams as well. Especially these tough like end seams. Another brush that helps is a uh, metal tooth comb. This is a type of dog comb. You can also work the fur out of the seams with a pin or anything. Now that I've got most of the fur out of that tough tail end seam, I'm going to turn it back just for a minute. Just go over that seam one more time. Just a little bit inside where I've sewn it. Get that covered up seam. There's no fur stuck in because I brushed it all out and then I sewed over it again. 
show you what it looks like on the tip of the tail. So here is my pattern piece slipped over the end of my tail tip and uh, as you can see it's going the correct direction and it follows my curve perfectly because I matched it up very well. At this stage you can glue it down or you can continue sewing your other pattern pieces and uh, you can also use this pattern to stuff a tail. Um, you can make several tails out of this pattern because now you've, you've got it stuck on a piece of paper and you can use it over and over and over again until basically it wears out. Uh, so this is a short tutorial on how to use tape to pattern a fursuit item. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I've been helpful today.